have looked at concave spherical mirrors and how they converge a beam of light and now it's time to figure out where would be the images if I kept objects at different different positions and I'm gonna again try and do this intuitively look at this radiation these rays of light are parallel to each other and that can only happen when the object or the source of light is at infinity because when you go very far away that's when the rays of light become parallel to each other and that tells us that when the rays of light are parallel to each other the image is formed at the principal focus and this image is a real image because the rays of light are actually being converged at that point and so we can very pretty quickly write down case number one very easily without doing much analysis that is when the object is at infinity image is at principal focus and it is going to be a real image so we know what happens when object is at infinity but the question now is what's going to happen if the object had come closer what if the object is somewhere over here so this is case number two I'm gonna keep an object between or outside C so what we're gonna do is we're gonna incident every single beam of light at these points point over here and over here because I've already drawn normal and we already know what happens to the parallel ray of light. That's going to be our sort of like a reference. All right, so let's do this. Let's incident a ray of light from here all the way to this point. And one more ray all the way to this point. So this is my incident radiation from that object. I want to know what's going to happen after reflection. Well, for that, we need to like look at the angle of incidence. And notice that this angle, I just took this as an example of 10 degrees when the rays are parallel to the principal axis. Notice now this angle is less than 10 degrees. It's much smaller than 10 degrees. If the angle is less than 10 degrees, maybe it's like, you know, maybe say 4 degrees or something. The reflected ray will also have the angle of 4 degrees. So angle of reflection will also be 4 degrees. And this tells us that the reflected ray, you see reflected ray cannot be over here because that angle is going to be too much. It can't be over here because that has to be 10 degrees. No, it has to be smaller than 10 degrees. It has to have the same angle as this one. And so it's going to end up reflecting somewhere over here. And the same thing is going to happen on this. So they are no longer being focused at F. You see, rays of light only get focused by the concave mirror at F when they are parallel to each other. But now, notice the rays of light are diverging from this point. This is their object O. Since they are diverging from that point, it's, it's going to become a little bit harder for my mirror to actually focus them, right? Because the incoming radiations are diverging. And since it becomes harder to focus them, you can actually see the mirror is having a little bit of hard time. And that's why it's now focusing it a little bit away from the principal focus, okay? So because of that, it focuses a little bit away. And so this is now my position of the image. So notice that the image now is between F and C, okay? So this tells us that the, as long as the object is outside C, well, as long as the object is over here, the image would be between F and C. Well, if you are curious, you could ask a question, how do I know that wherever I keep my object outside C, the image has to be between F and C. How do I know that? Well, again, look at the geometry. That's all you need to do. That's why it's called as geometrical optics. Regardless of where you keep the object outside C, for example, for example, suppose you had kept the object over here. Notice what's going to happen to the incident angle. Okay, I'm gonna incident a ray of light right at this point. Look at the incident angle. Notice that the incident angle is still 10 less than 10 degrees and therefore the reflected angle will also be less than 10 degrees. Notice where you have it. You have the image between F and C. And let's say you come closer. Suppose you come closer. You come all the way here. You come here. Where will the image be? Well, again, let's draw. Let's draw the incident ray. Notice the incident ray now makes even smaller angle. It's less than 10 degrees. And therefore, the reflected ray is also going to make even smaller angle and the image is going to come even closer to the object. It's going to farther away from the mirror. Okay? So as long as the object is outside C, wherever you go outside C, you'll notice that the image will be between F and C. 
the closer the object comes towards C, the closer image also comes towards C. So that is case two, my dear friends. All right, now let's look at another case. So let's see what do you what do you, what are we gonna get? Well, that's easy actually. That's actually very easy. That's a that's the simplest case we have. Suppose we kept our object right at this point. Then you can see that the incident ray is going to be straight at that point, straight over here. And look at the angle of incidence, people. The angle of incidence is um, a zero, and therefore the reflected ray will just go back, and hence the rays of light will get focused at the same point. Ooh, you get the image at C. Again, notice they are converging, and that's real. That's a real image. All right. All right. Let's now go to case four. What happens if the object comes between F and C? So let me draw that again. Oh, wait. I don't have to draw that again. I'll tell you what I'm going to do to find out what happens if the object is between F and C. I'll tell you what you're going to do. We're going to go back over here. And we're going to use a very simple and very powerful idea that ray diagrams or reflection is reversible. What do I mean by that? What I mean is, if here is a mirror, if here you have a mirror, and if this is your incident ray of light, and this is your reflected ray, then the principle of reversibility tells us, because the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection are the same, it tells us that if you were to make your reflected ray the incident ray, then the incident ray would just become the reflected ray. That's called as the principle of reversibility. Do you understand why I'm going to invoke that? Because now I want to know what's going to happen when the object is inside C, between F and C. So what's going to happen when this becomes the object? Well, this now becomes the incident ray. The reflected ray became the incident ray. Oh, that means this now is going to become the reflected ray. And therefore, this now is going to become the image. So, we can write the fourth case here itself. If the object is C. Again, the rays of light are converging at that point. So, this is real. It was real here as well. We are all dealing with real images because rays of light are converging. And from the same argument that we did before, as long as the object is anywhere between F and Z, we're going to find out that the image is also going to be outside Z because it's just reversible. Same argument that I did over here is going to hold good. So let's now bring this object closer and closer and closer to F and you will see the image goes farther and farther and farther and away, farther away from the mirror. And the question now is, what's going to happen if I brought my object right at this point? If this was my object. I know it's getting a little crowded, but try to follow me, please. Well, if this is the object, notice that the incident ray will be over here. Well, principle of reversibility just tells us this is going to be the reflected ray. Because if and this was the incident ray, this was the reflected ray. Now, this is the incident ray. This becomes the reflected ray. And therefore, case 5 is just opposite of this. So, I'm going to write case 5 over here. Okay, one question you could ask is, is it real or is it virtual? Well, if you want real images, we want rays of light to converge. Well, that's not happening. Rays of light are not converging. They are parallel. If you want the image to be virtual, the rays of light must diverge. Well, that's not happening because the rays of light are parallel. In simple terms, there is no image, okay? Because if the rays of light are parallel, you can't have an image. You need them to be either converging or diverging. And since you don't have an image, we say the image is at infinity. So that's, that's a sort of technical way of saying that. So we have covered all the cases from infinity to this point and hopefully I did that intuitively. So I want you every single time not to remember these. I don't want you to remember these at all. I mean, science is not about remembering, yuck. It's about the concept, okay? Every single time you, you have a question, uh, when the object is here and where's going to be the image, you can draw this. It's a very simple diagram. It's very powerful. All right, now comes the question. 
what if I put object over here? If the object is um, inside the principal focus, between P and F, inside the focal length, what's going to happen now? Well, we're going to draw rays of light from here to this point. Same thing. That's not going to change. So the rays of light are going to be the same. These are the incident light. But now, look at the angle of incident. Look at this angle. Look at this angle. Ooh, that angle is way bigger than 10 degrees. It's actually, in this example, more than 20 degrees. That's not supposed to happen. You're not supposed to have big angles, but it's okay, whatever. Anyway, that angle is huge. And therefore, the angle of reflection will also be more than 10 degrees. Therefore, after reflection, is it going to go like this? Nope, that's 10 degrees. Is it going to go like this? No. That's not going to go like that because that's smaller than 10 degrees. I need to go larger than 10 degrees, maybe about 25 degrees, whatever this angle was. So it's going to go like this. It's going to go like that. Similarly, the same thing is going to happen over here. And now, look at the two reflected rays. One is over here. It's intersecting it's with my uh, writing over there, but that's okay. And there's reflected ray number two. I can. I hope you can see that. And look at these guys. These guys are diverging. These are diverging rays. My concave mirror is not able to converge the beam of light now. Even though it's a converging mirror, the incoming radiation is so freaking diverging that my mirror is finding it so hard that it actually loses in convergence. All even after converging, the the rays of light appear to diverge now. And and if you look at this carefully you will notice that it appears to diverge from a point somewhere over here. This guy appears to diverge from, oops, you know, appears to diverge from somewhere over there. And therefore, and therefore, if your eyes were to look at this, your brain would say that these two rays were emanating from a point over here. And that is our last case. Case number six is when object is um, between, or I would say inside the focal length, okay, inside focal length, you notice that the image is inside the mirror, image is basically virtual, inside. The closer you come, notice the closer you come closer to the mirror or the mid closer to the pole, the angle of incidence just keeps increasing. Can you imagine a ray of light? No, I don't want to draw that ray and mess things up. Can you imagine the angle of ray keeps increasing? And if the angle of incidence increases, angle of reflection increases, and you will now notice that um, the, the diverging rays appear to come from a point which is closer to the mirror. So the closer you go to the mirror, the closer the image comes towards the mirror. So what we discussed here is intuitively how to figure out where the images will be when you have objects. And notice we considered point objects. But you could, and that too, we consider point objects on the principal axis. But we could ask another question. What if the objects are not on the principal axis, but if the object are somewhere over here, they have some offset? Well, we're going to see what's going to happen to that in the next video. So stay tuned for more.